Hey, I'm making a game, but more on that at the end of the video. Let's talk about indie devs. It seems like it's always David versus Goliath, indies versus triple A's, and lately it feels like there's a weird stigma around liking triple A titles. You might hate games from big studios and love indie games for their charm and attention to detail, and to be honest, I'm in the same camp. But what is it that makes solo and small team devs able to do what they do so much better than multi-million dollar studios? Being an indie developer is kind of like being an artist with a blank canvas and unlimited paint. You're not constrained by corporate agendas or market trends, instead you're free to let your creativity run wild and create something truly unique. Consider a game like Undertale by Toby Fox. It's a quirky RPG that subverts traditional gaming tropes and expectations. Toby had complete creative control over every aspect of the game, allowing him to craft a deeply personal experience that resonated with players on a profound level. Stardew Valley, a game I've already talked about on the channel, one man was able to build the world that he wanted without any oversight and no partnerships changing his mind on mechanics or art. But studios like Ubisoft, Bethesda, they have massive budgets and teams numbering in the hundreds if not thousands. But with all that money and manpower comes pressure. Pressure to deliver a game that not only meets expectations, but shatters them. Consider a franchise like Assassin's Creed, one of my personal favorite franchises up until Black Flag. I wasn't a huge fan. I do, I, I prefer the earlier games. I was just, I was not a fan of how Brotherhood ended. I'm okay, it's okay. I'm over it now. I've healed. Each new installment in the series comes with sky-high expectations from fans and investors, and this can create a risk-averse environment where innovation takes a back seat to familiarity. After all, why take a chance on something new? when you can bank on what's already proven successful. With all of those employees and budgets comes the need to make a, well, to make a shit ton of money. Like a lot, a lot, a lot. And sure, a lot of smaller indie titles also make millions and millions of dollars, but a unique mechanic isn't guaranteed. We've always played FPSs, Call of Duty, will sell copies. One of the most popular games from way back when was an FPS, so why break the mold? There's the idea that back in the day, games were better, more innovative. And I'd say they probably were, because no one knew what worked yet, and the barrier for what a good game was hadn't really been set. Mario could innovate and try new things, because all there was was new things. When The Elder Scrolls started, not as many people played games. They were trying to reach a very specific audience. But fast forward to Skyrim, and they want to be accessible to everyone. I think that's why a lot of newer games and franchises just feel dumbed down to people who have been long-standing fans. But it's not just innovation and experimentation that puts indie games in another level, it's attention to detail. When you're working with a smaller team or alone and have a limited budget, every aspect of your game becomes a labor of love. From the art style to the sound design, indie devs pour their hearts and souls into their creations. Take a game like Hollow Knight by Team Cherry. It's this sprawling metroidvania with hand-drawn art, atmospheric music, everything feels so... on purpose? Despite being developed by a handful of people, it feels like a AAA experience in every way that matters. Hollow Knight, Stardew Valley, and anything by Edmund McMillan just feels so put together. No giant game-breaking bugs and glitches, typically, and if they are, they listen to their community and fix them. It feels like AAA studios just don't have the time. I think a lot of gamers just feel left behind by someone like Ubisoft. On my previous video, someone mentioned how good it felt to have the creator of Stardew be an active part of the community, and it's true, a developer that stands by their work and obviously loves what they've made, or at least the genre, can make a big difference. Indie devs make games they love. AAA studios are forced to make games that make money. 
In recent years, we've witnessed an indie renaissance, a resurgence of creativity and innovation that's breathed new life into the gaming industry. Indie games are no longer seen as novelties or side projects. They're standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with AAA giants, proving that big budgets aren't always necessary to make a big impact. Games like Hades and, hell, even Among Us have transcended the indie label to become cultural phenomena in their own right. They've pushed the boundaries of what games can be and inspired a new generation of developers to dream big and aim high, myself included. I think indie games have just really set themselves apart. You can almost tell just by how smooth a game runs if it were made by one person. How deep the lore goes, how good it feels to play it. But with that comes another high barrier to entry. The bigger indie games get, the bigger all of them have to be. One thing's for certain, the gaming industry is in a constant state of flux, with new ideas and technologies reshaping the landscape every day. Whether you're a fan of indie darlings or AAA blockbusters, one thing's for sure, there's never been a more exciting time to be a gamer or a game developer. Hey, thanks for watching, and speaking of indie games, I'm making one. I'm writing a devlog over on Patreon to detail my progress. It's a text-based puzzle and narrative mystery, and it's fun. It's got a good feeling to it. I like it. Actually, I love it, and I hope when it's released that people can tell. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments, what are some of your favorite indie games? What are some of your favorite AAAs? Which big studios are doing it right? But that's all for now, and as always, okay, bye.